normally we are trying to find first and second derivative to sketch curve of a given function. Now this time what we will do, we kind of reverse it. I will draw a graph for you and then you have to figure out in which interval is first derivative positive or negative and in which interval the second derivative is positive or negative, right? So that will give you a good understanding of relation between first and second derivative and how they are represented on the graph of the function. So I'll just sketch one for you and let's say this is my function and now when I break like this that means the concavity is breaking. So at this point we have a point of inflection so it not changes from here like this. Do you see that part? Now again I'm breaking so again it is concave down at this portion and after this it becomes concave up and it's like this and at this stage also I'm going to break and break it like this and that is how my function is. Well I'm not drawing any x or y axis here to show you very clearly that that does not really have any part to play for solving this question or figuring out the regions or intervals where the function has positive, negative, first derivative or second derivative. But the important points are point of inflection. So let me mark those points for you. So these are the points of inflection, just three points we have. And these points which I'm representing are actually points of inflection. Right. So these are critical points. And then let me also mark local, maximum and minimum points and which are, let's say, these are the points, right? So these points are local, maximum, and minimum points for me. So I'm saying this point over here is maximum or minimum, correct? So this is a function before you, and let me name them as, let us say, A, B, C, D, right? So it's say A, B, and we have the C, D, E, F, and G, right? The function looks like of a polynomial and it is definitely odd degree polynomial, correct? Since these are opposite ends with leading coefficient, negative, right? Right side is down. So it's an odd degree polynomial with negative leading coefficient. Now that is the situation. Now let's go through these one by one and try to answer our question. So the first one before us is f dash x is greater than 0 and f double dash x is also greater than 0, right? In fact, why don't you copy all these things, pause the video, answer the questions and then look into my solution. So four conditions which I have are, first, both f dash x and f double dash x, that means first and second derivatives are both positive. And then we have a condition where first derivative is positive but second is negative and then we flipped it. First derivative is negative, second is positive or first is negative and second is also negative. So these are four conditions. You have to from here write down the intervals. So of course you can use this as negative infinity here and positive infinity to write the interval if you want to write on this side, correct? Now let's answer these questions. The very first one for us is both are positive, first derivative and second derivative. How will you figure out? So when first derivative is positive, the graph should be increasing, right? So that is the tangent. We are looking for a positive tangent. That means graph has to be increasing and for this condition to be positive, it is concave up. So that is the combination we are looking for. So this is decreasing part doesn't really work for us, but that part works for us. So this interval is a good interval. Graph is concave up and it is increasing, right? So this part is all decreasing. Let's forget about it. But this part is again good for us. It is increasing and concave up and thereafter it's concave down. So that doesn't really work for us. So therefore, we do get one answer here. And let me say this point is from A to B. So I'm writing my answers like we can write here. So we say from A to B, right? That is first interval. And the second is from E to F, right? So then we have from E to F, right? 
you can use both both of them are in this interval now let's look into the next option which is first derivative is positive that means it is increasing and the second derivative is negative that means it's concave down right now concave down and positive so positive means all this and concave down is perfect so this one is good for us b to c right so we can write here b to c that's one option and then increasing and concave down f to g right and then f to g so that is also increasing and concave down so that also is our solution now the next one is f dash x is less than zero less than zero means decreasing right like this decreasing and so let me draw a line which is kind of decreasing right and f double dash that means second derivative is positive that means concave up right concave up and down so concave up and down is all this from here to here and after that it is actually increasing so that doesn't work so this part is good for us right so we can write this as minus infinity to a that's one solution and something like this we can see here also right d to e right so we get d to e that is another option got it so this is concave down that doesn't work for us so we got all this so far and let's now let look into more options and then we have let's use this color now okay so i'm looking for a new color anyway we'll get this one so which is let's use this so we are looking for f dash x less than zero less than zero means down correct so we're looking for something in the graph which is going downwards and double dash that means second derivative is also negative that means concave down so the graph has to be coming downwards and concave down so downwards means this so that is the portion which is of our interest we can write this as c to d right and then something like this is all over here right so we can write that as also g to infinity so that is how we see our graph so different portions i have highlighted here and now you can appreciate what is the real effect of first derivative being positive or negative or second derivative being positive or negative and their combinations. So that is how you can analyze a graph and you can figure out from the graph what is positive and what is negative. This will actually help you to draw good and accurate sketches for the graph of given function. I hope that helps. Thank you.